<laughs> He's finding a polo. He'll be right here. He'll be right here. Oh, it's up. Good. Back and better than ever. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. So we have literally done the intro like 11 times now. Uh, it might seem like we're 17 minutes late. And we are. That's why it <laughs> seems that way. We were trying to get it, but for some reason the other room kept crashing. We run a tight ship here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so here we go. I'm going to start over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretend you just got in this chat. Oh, Welcome yeah. to the discounted cash flow evaluations. Jimmy, what is discounted cash flow and what kind of evaluations are we doing? Uh, hi, I'm Jimmy, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay, so the purpose of this live stream is to introduce you guys to uh, discounted cash flow, what we're doing in the private community, where our coming website is going, and ultimately the give you guys a chance to throw some companies at us. We'll come up with a fair value of those companies super quick. So yeah, we should probably jump right in. Yeah. Activision. We're going to jump right into Activision. Apparently Activision is the big news. Today. Yeah. So anybody who saw my personal investment portfolio might have seen that uh, I own Activision, bought it a couple weeks ago. Uh, Mikey had a thought on that. While he does that, I'm going to go make sure the audio is good. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you why I'm excited about this whole merger thing. This is essentially like like Nintendo buying Sonic. Microsoft now can do anything they want with Crash Bandicoot. They had they own Call of Duty. So that's going to be like crazy for their their uh, streaming service. Like imagine having their whole back library there. This is going to be a major move for Microsoft. I think that I think it's going to go crazy like they own uh what is it? Diablo uh candy crush warcraft i believe is one of their things but like i think spyro is them too like essentially i think what they're going to start doing if they're smart they're going to start giving like the first month of call of duty is only on xbox i don't think they're going to take it off all the platforms because there's just too much money to be made there but um i don't know it's going to be insane and now for the analyst and i'm back in bed again okay we're doing it again okay sorry about that uh, let me know if you guys are having any audio problems. I think we're good, but let's jump right in, right? Uh, we already jumped in. You're, you wanted your Crash Bandicoot thing. He was very <laughs> excited about that. Okay, so any tickers you guys want, start typing them in. We got a whole bunch from Discord. And as you're watching this, if you want to come sign up for the private investing community, which also gives you access to the website, we'll leave. there should be a link in the description below. Uh, there had better be a link in the description below, but <laughs> in hindsight, we actually changed the links in the description below a few times, so I think that there is, but either way, uh, Activision, we can see that Activision, so I bought Activision about $63, $64 per share, and uh, I brag, brag, brag. Now, overall, that, that was pretty good, but the fair value, I think, was right around $94, $95. We did a video on Activision not long ago, if you check that out on our channel. Uh, but let's jump right into other companies, right? M Mikey just told me to breathe. He said, calm down, man. Take it down a little. It's not like anything went wrong. Oh, look at all the tickers we've got. There's no tickers. Alibaba, hey, hey, I hey, see. Hey. Oh, sorry. We're fighting over the mouse. <laughs> Mikey's over here typing hey, in. Alibaba, there you go. All right, what do we got? Alibaba. Okay, so let me show you guys real quick just some of the basics of this. I typically use a required rate of return of 7.5%. That's what this box is up here. If the box is green, it looks like it's undervalued. Here is the current price. So right now, Alibaba's at about 128 per share. Using a 7.5% required rate of return, it, we, it looks like it should be worth 202. If you used, if now many people don't like 7.5%, if you don't, 10% says it should be worth 144, 12 and a half, 15, go right down the line. Then we have their own weighted average cost of capital. That is unique to each company, calculated based on uh, market projections, based on the volatility of the stock, things like that. It is the textbook number to, to use. If you ever learn about discounted cash flow, they probably say use the weighted average cost of capital. So this is a feature we want to have on the website. They have a very high weighted average cost of capital. So according to that, it looks like it could be overvalued if you use their, their own weighted average cost of capital. Uh, the other thing is, uh, over here we got PE. So I've got, let me show you really where this data is coming from. We have a chart. Uh, this is one feature that we want to add to the website that you look at this and you say the uh, this orange line is the average, the five-year average. Right now, 
it looks undervalued because the blue line is below the orange line. It's really that simple. But this data here, we sort of summarize that over here. So is it undervalued? You can quickly look. These are green. So yes, it is below its own five-year average. The theory there is that we want to pay less than, compared to itself, we want to pay less than their own average. Enterprise value to revenue, not as appropriate for Alibaba, but still it's an important number. It's really good if you have a, a younger company, a company that perhaps not is not profitable. That being said, what else do we got? Mikey's Mikey's tracking the list, so I just keep putting up tickers. Well, listen, we're gonna go through them. Like we'll 400 of them just went past, so yeah. Well, he's jotting them down too. Don't worry. We got a pencil. We got a pen. We're making magic here. <laughs> Facebook, Meta platforms. I can't believe they changed their name. Uh, okay. No one knows what Facebook is. Okay. Facebook is a company that uh, changed their name. <laughs> uh, so it looks like it's undervalued according to seven and a half percent relative to their own history, a lower PE. Oh yeah, most important thing, and this is actually, I think, one of the real benefits of the website that we're putting up, is these numbers down here are analyst estimates. So this is the actual year. We're projecting out three years. This is actually a change I just made. I've been using four years of, histor of projections. I found that this line up here is the number of analysts that are projecting. So there are 21 analysts contributing to this $42 billion estimate for Facebook's free cash flow in 2023. I found when I was using four years, I was finding that the fourth year, there weren't that many analysts covering it. So how reliable is that? It was skewing our projections just a little too much. It was. So we said, let's make it just three years. And we back tested it to see, what does it still work? And it actually seems to work just as well. So, one consideration is because we're using a perpetual growth rate of 2.5%, essentially what that means is that after the year 2023, we can see analyst estimates are growing by 53% from last year to this year. Then negative 10%, analysts are projecting a dip in free cash flow. And then they're projecting another 32% growth. What we are assuming with a... 2.5% perpetual growth rate is that from there on out, it's going to grow by 2.5% every year. In theory, it's an average for a company like Facebook, for a company like Facebook or meta platforms, uh, for a company like that, it's less important because really all it does is it makes our, con our estimates here much more conservative. So just keep that in the back of our mind that this is, we're assuming that growth goes very stale very quickly. Two and a half percent moderate growth. But I've, I haven't been too concerned about On the website, we're going to have the ability to use your own estimates. And, you know, you want to go out 10 years by all means, but you're not going to get many analyst estimates there. But we're going to have analyst estimates on the website. So the point is, let's plow through a few of them. What else do we got? Real quick, let them know how you do your uh, safety and margin. Mar oh, margin of safety. The backwards over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he went the other way on that. Margin of safety. Okay, so I actually don't have that in the calculation. I'm not putting that in the calculation because on the website, we will have the option to add that into the calculation, but we're not doing it right now because I don't want to impose my margin of safety onto you. So for Facebook, I might want a 10% margin of safety. For uh, another company, Alibaba, I might want a bigger margin of safety because I recognize that there is larger risk. So I want a margin of safety that is slightly larger. So there will be a spot on the website. I put it up here because I don't want people to forget to add a margin of safety. But I don't necessarily want... Uh, so, But I haven't included in the calculation. So that 340, it does not count the margin of safety. Okay. That being said, we went to Coinbase. Coinbase. And we're going to move along fairly quickly. That way we can get to a bunch of your tickers. If you guys have any questions, throw it up there. But it, come Kevin. sign up for the website. You'll see. Jimmy come Penny sign up. Break. Link in the description below. <laughs> uh, there should be a link in the description below. 82% um, sure there is. Uh, okay. Next company. Coinbase. Diversified Financials. Is this that uh, the Bitcoin one? Or like cryptocurrency? It's one of those. I things. forget. But you got four analyst estimates, so okay, not a ton of estimates, but you got some. Stock looks fairly undervalued. 10% looks undervalued, uh, slightly undervalued. 75 looks great. Their own weighted average cost of capital, I love seeing this. I love seeing when their own weighted average cost of capital is 
also discounted. So it looks good at 7.5%, and then it's also a good buy with their own weight and average cost of capital. I feel like it's just confirmation. It's not necessary, but it makes me feel nice. Okay, what else we got? So Coinbase, if you're looking at that one, I would dig deeper on this one. This one's probably worth a deeper dive. At least it looks like it's trading at a discount enough to worth considering. Nordstrom. Nordstrom, the retail company. Brick and mortar. We're going old school here. <laughs> okay, again, though, it looks fairly undervalued. Now, this one, you might... I would do it, but this is one of those examples that I would I would consider researching this one more because, again, on weight average cost of capital, $34. That's a pretty good upside. I mean, that's a decent percentage jump. 7.5%, $53. Decent jump. I would consider, I would dig deeper here, but you might consider taking a larger margin of safety, making sure that this typically brick and mortar retail company can handle, you know, can do, can offer the these numbers. Our question, if you're curious, jot down these numbers, and do you think that Nordstrom's, in this case, is going to hit those numbers? If they do, the, give it time, the stock should, you know, uh, Buffett says in the long term, in the short term, the stock market's a voting machine, in the long term, it's a weighing machine. Give this time, it should, it should get to its fair value, but they've got to hit their numbers, or at least get close. That's hence the reason you had a margin of safety. I love the persistence of uh, this one person in the chat. Really wants to know about Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil. I know. I, I, I saw it like six or seven <laughs> times. Okay, this is a good one. Uh, now, there's some interesting ways to value Exxon Mobil. Discount of cash flow works. Seven and a half percent works. Look at that. Nine point one percent also looks about fairly valued. So again, this one looks good. Look at the PE. Pretty low compared to its own history. Enterprise value to revenue, it's not that important in this case. This company's a large, well-established company. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're looking at debt, if you're looking for debt and cash, we're going to be having that out there as well so you can see it. Net debt, this, another thing I should have commented on, is these calculations are after debt. So we calculate the fair value of the company using projections. We then take away debt and add back cash. This, All these numbers that you see here, are debt adjusted. So that's a that's a good sign. So ExxonMobil, yeah, looks like it could be very good, especially rising inflation could lead to higher commodity prices. Even if they stay the same, this could be quite good. Cleveland Cliffs. Holy moly, look at that. Okay, so I'm all for discounted cash flow. You got three analysts <laughs> projecting out three years. This looks, I mean, this looks sick. Look at this, 15%. You got it, still it's worth $33. Look at the upside. What does this stock do? What, is this, what does Cleveland Cliffs do? I don't know I what they sure. do. The big hint is materials. Yes. Materials. Not only should the person who recommended this research, this stock, but everybody. I hate to say that we're going to steal the idea, but we. <laughs> this is one of the cool parts about the community that we have is that there's so many good they're, ideas they're that look at the value. In different directions. Yeah, and they, you know, we came up with videos recently. Uh, top five stocks for uh, for value for growth. Those all came from the community. So as we're doing them, we're piling up sticks stocks like this because my fear when I see all green like that is is this a value trap? Is this a fair way to value this stock? Only in digging deeper are you going to know that. But overall, I mean, at first glance, this looks great. So I don't know who recommended that one, but. Well played. Mikey's got, got the next one. Anthem. Okay. Healthcare equipment. Healthcare equipment. Now, this is interesting because we've done this for a few healthcare companies, and it looks quite interesting from the perspective of 7.5%. I like it. 10% or 10.3%, their own cost of capital looks slightly undervalued. About, what is that? About 10% undervalued. Uh, so I hesitate on that. But I would look at what this company does and what their competitors do because we've gone through a bunch of uh, uh, healthcare equipment companies and a lot of them seem undervalued. So at first glance, it looks interesting from a 7.5% pers perspective, but you might also glance, uh, you know, if we could throw a few competitors in there, if anybody has any, toss them out because some competitors could be more interesting from a research perspective. This might be one of them. Yeah. Well, let's try this one. Teladoc Health, and it does not. No. This is not the one we want. Uh, just <laughs> same, keep, same services. Yeah, same <laughs> services. You do have some analysts. You got five, uh, five, six, and four. 
Uh, so you got some, but you can tell by these numbers, it's a young company. Right. Uh, I'm guessing by price to earnings, us not having numbers here, it's probably because they're not profitable over the past 12 months, or maybe they had a bad quarter uh, somewhere. But yeah, I would I would hesitate on this one. I'd look somewhere else for now. Uber. Uber, going crazy on the chat. Uber, overvalued. That's not a big shock, though. Uh, a lot of times these older, these uh, younger, sort of faster growing companies, and that might be partially because we're using a 2.5% perpetual growth rate for a younger, faster growing company like this, and you can tell by their numbers, analysts have them ramping up. It might be more fair to go out eight or 10 years. And uh, once the website's up and running over the next few months, we'll be able to do that. But for now, in the case of live stream, I'd say let's not do that. Let's move on to the next one. SoFi, is this a bank? Diversified Financial. Okay, so I think it is a bank, right? Isn't this like the online lending company? Yeah, yeah, they do loans, they do, I think they do student loans, they do private loans, they do. Yeah, now you might see some negative numbers here. Uh, not applicable for uh, free cash flow in 2020. And I would say that is because this kind of free cash flow is not the best valuation method here. It's really not. The best valuation method would be Wait. Price to book value. So if I, uh, perhaps they have negative numbers, I don't know. Throw in like a JP Morgan or a Citibank or Bank of America real quick. I just want to show you guys, if you're going to value financial stocks, insurance companies, banks, uh, here's Citigroup. Citigroup, look at this, analysts. No analysts projecting any free cash flow. That is not because they don't do it, it's because that's not the right valuation method. Go to price to tangible book value. This is, again, one of the features that we want that we're putting on the website because we want a way to value every type of company. You can do price to book value if that's all you can get your hands on. Price to tangible book value. Right there, I'm going to click back and forth. And you can see they don't, you know, there you're going to get different numbers, but chart wise, they look very similar. I usually prefer price to tangible book value. And Citigroup, we can see, looks slightly undervalued. It is below its own average. The general rule of thumb for this type of multiple is to buy below one. You wanna pay less than one for the book value. I actually don't like that much. I much prefer, buy it less than its own average. I mean, what if the stock is historically traded at 0.9? That's the average. Why would you wanna pay one? I mean, when you could buy it for 0.85, sort of like we are doing here, 0.82. It's five year average is 0.96. It's 10 year average is 0.89. It happens to be, it looks like it could be undervalued right now from a few different valuation methods. So feel free to throw financial companies too, insurance companies, things like that, because we'll just switch over to price to price to book value. Nothing we could do is REITs, if anybody has any REITs. Oh, JP Morgan, good one. Yeah. Oh my God, no no free cash flow, what do we do? Okay, we know what to do, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> price to tangible book value. This one looks overvalued. Its current price to tangible book value is above its average. Sounds like Ben Stiller. Huh? <laughs> Switch over to price to book value. You're gonna again. They're they're the, they're not the same, but they're practically the same in the case of most large banks. Uh, so yeah, this one looks slightly overvalued. If I ha if I want a financial, if I want access to financials, in this case, I'm leaning more towards Citigroup than I am J.P. Morgan. Uh, what else we got? Uh, I only have like two thousand more. So. 2,000 more. <laughs> I like it. Look at all these tickers. This is crazy. You guys have to come sign up for the live streams. We normally have like, you know, we can get through so many of them. Uh, <laughs> 1% is not happening today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, Zoom. Zoom, I got a feeling this would have been a real good call, like, you know. <laughs> a couple years ago. You know. Uh, but interestingly, has the stock, I'm just curious. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> so, we can see the stock price is tanked. We've got this a one-year chart. And... This is our fair value. That number, if you're curious, is based on the 7.5% uh, required rate of return. Again, something we want to put on the website. But you can see it's recently dropped below it. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say 158 current price. Uh, our fair value is coming at 171. They have a very low cost of capital. So in that case, I like to go more conservative. In this case, a higher... in any case, so a higher cost of capital is more conservative. So if you're going to pick and choose, don't look at this number, just go with the 171 and play more, and then add your 10% margin, add your margin of safety to that. 
I would consider, I would have a higher margin of safety on this one because there's too much potential, you know, how overvalued were, were they before? We know they would be overvalued before, but how overvalued? So I would build in a little buffer just in case. But again, it looks interesting enough to do more research on. Snap. Snap. Okay, so this one is... Is this Snapchat? Is it? I thought uh, Facebook owned Snapchat. No, oh, no, no, that's Instagram. It might be Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, I think it is, actually. Yeah, the Instagram. I was thinking of Instagram. Right. But we can see they're making the turn here. Again, discounted cash flow might not be the best way to value them. Let's go to something like enterprise value to revenue. Hmm. Enterprise value to revenue looks at the revenue, in this case, over the past five years. Five-year average is 20x. So we could have bought Snapchat or Snap, Snap Inc., at 20x over the past five years. Right now, it's paying where we would pay 31x, 31 and a half. So it seems a bit overvalued. Enterprise value to EBITDA? Nope, nope. <laughs> well, you know what? We don't have the historical numbers there because they're just go. They're a younger company, so that's why enterprise value to enterprise value to revenue would work better. So overall, looks pretty good. Hemorrhage and pain. Uh, now, hem hemorrhage. Helm, Helmrich. 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 There we go. We're getting better. I don't know. Now, here's my real question. This is a slightly unusual company for people to request. Did we mean HP or did we mean HPQ, which is HP the company? Sure. Just that. Just that. We'll do both real quick, just in case. This one. Okay. This is a good example. This one's close. Uh, from a fair value perspective, this add a margin of safety to it will be just out of line. Fairly high weighted average cost of capital. I would probably hesitate on hemorrhage and pain, I'm guessing. But HPQ, want to do HPQ? Yeah, why not? Which is HP, the it's company, not. like the computer company. Let's add a... Let's add a Q to this bad boy. HPQ, this is one we've looked at a few times over in the private investing community. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't signed up for the private investing community, go sign up for that. Link in the description below. Is there really a link in the description below? Does anybody know? We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find <laughs> out. If there's not, let us know uh, in the in the in the chat. But this one looks quite good. Thirty-seven dollars. Okay, forget my seven half percent because our numbers get to be so extreme here. Twelve and a half percent. It still works. I have been critical of using twelve and a half percent as a required return because oftentimes it doesn't. It does, uh, it's so difficult to find a good company with that type of required return that I think you miss a lot of good opportunities. That's why I use 7.5%. I did a video on required rate of return, but basically I'm using a premium over the AAA corporate bond rating. When the rates go up, and they'll probably go up this year, I'll increase it to whatever they go up. If they go up 1%, I'll increase by 1%. But even using their own cost of capital, the stock looks fairly undervalued. There's a big upside between, let's call it 38 bucks and 56 bucks. Percentage-wise, that's a good return. This one has historically and continues to be a very interesting, a very interesting way to value, uh, a very interesting company to consider looking closer at. McKesson. McKesson. Uh, yeah, another healthcare again. company. Yeah. Uh, and look at this. This is a perfect example. Healthcare equipment and services. That's the ticker. That's the category. By the way, this gigs industry, the, every company classifies themselves in a certain industry. This is the industry they classify themselves in. We just pull it down from one of our data sources, which is how we're doing this. Uh, looks undervalued here. Looks undervalued here. Looks undervalued here. Doesn't look undervalued according to the PE. The reason that would be red, that would be a rounding thing. But at 12 and these, you know, with this looking so good, I would ignore this. Um, very reasonable. You get down a little bit here, up a little bit, down a little bit. So you're about, about flat. Two analysts there. You know, maybe we want to confirm that as we're doing our own research. But overall, McKesson looks like out of the healthcare companies we've looked at so far, McKesson looks quite good. You all right? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, we're going with tag. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Take a sip. Take a sip. Water. Okay, good. Stag. Is this a, uh, I Real think it's the REIT? Okay, REIT. This is another perfect example. They have one analyst projecting free cash flow, but free cash flow is not the best way to go here. Best way to go for a REIT is either some of the parts where you're valuing each asset individually, super difficult to do, much simpler way, 
price to adjusted funds from operations. Another feature we're putting on the website, go sign up. It's lovely. But a REIT, something like this, uh, adjusted funds from operations is a lot like earnings. So a lot, this is very similar to a PE ratio, but it is basically the adjusted funds from their operations. It's basically how much money they're, let's say they're, they own buildings and they're renting out properties and they got to maintain the properties. This is what that is. This is the, the money that they're making on those properties. It's a great way to value the company. In the case of Stag, looks slightly overvalued right now, but if you ever see a REIT, this is the valuation method you want to go to. It's the simplest default one. If when you're doing your deeper dive, you want to go, uh, you know, look at, you know, some other more complex ways of doing it, by all means, but this way is the best way. It's the simplest way. I would look for it to be undervalued there. If you have any other REITs, throw them out because those are always interesting. Plus, well, the Vegas fans. fans. I guess that's the resort. Yeah, yeah. I guess this is the casino company. Uh, slightly undervalued at 7.5%. Not very undervalued, yeah. You know, nothing, no, you know, I think it's okay. My question for whoever's suggesting this, whoever's considering researching this might be, do you agree with these numbers? Do you think projecting out further would help? We're only going just three years out. Do you think going out five years, uh, seven years might be better? If you think, I mean, they have a big jump up, they have, you know, uh, that's a negative percentage. That clearly doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but uh, I guess the negative year to the positive year. I gotta, I'll gotta. i figure out that math and clear that away. Uh, but basically, I for this one, for now, I would stay away from this one. This one seems a bit, you know, dangerous from a, you know, valuation perspective. Is it worth it? There's probably better ideas out there right now. All right, what else have we got? Victory, Victory Capital. Capital. That's a financial. Okay, so right away... We're seeing no analyst projections. Uh, oh, by the way, if you click on there, yeah, revenue estimates, you can go with projections for revenue and calculate discounted cash flow that way. In this case, I, I'm, I would stick with uh, price to tangible book value, price to book value in this case. And this is a perfect example. Some companies don't publish their tangible book numbers. So we get a blank line here, price to book value. We've seen many times it works about the same. Right now, sadly, this one looks to be slightly overvalued. And again, according to its five year and its 10 year history, you could buy this company at 2.2x. If you can, don't overpay now, unless there is some reason why we think that might be happening. If they you know, are getting a new line of business or something like that, maybe. But for now, I would, I would, I'd wait for this one to pull back a bit. What else we got? Firing right along. Foot Locker. Foot Locker. Interesting. So, Foot Locker, undervalued, undervalued, undervalued. <laughs> uh, look at the PE of four. I think I saw this the other day because I remember being shocked by that PE. We've done this in the recent weeks. Yeah. Wow. This is, um, this is, this is simple. Yes. Do a deeper dive on this. Yes. We, we, I think this is actually on our list of videos to do. Do this one because this one looks fantastic. 8.2%, by the way, that's a very reasonable weighted average cost of capital. Even at 10%, you got you got decent upside. So I would, yeah, take this and run with this one. This one looks good. Let's see what else he's got. So exciting to see what he's going to type in. Let's try <laughs> to guess it as he types it in. Neo, okay, he typed fast. Uh, <laughs> Neo, un overvalued. That's not too surprising. Uh, the only he asked for 400 times. Yeah, this company, you're going to have to go to enterprise value to revenue. And enterprise value to revenue, okay, it actually looks cheap compared to its own average. Now, I would hesitate that a bit, saying some of these, although those numbers aren't, I mean, they are outrageous. Most enterprise value to revenue, you'd be in the three, four, five, six range. Uh, so these numbers are skewing it a bit. By the way, these are quarterly numbers, if you're wondering why. The chart looks like it's lacking data. So, I mean, it looks better price than I expected. If you were comparing it to something like a Tesla, then, yeah, maybe it might be worth, you know, digging deeper on this one. Ignore the discounted cash flow numbers. In this case, stick with price to, uh, enterprise, uh, yeah, price to enterprise value to revenue because the company's so young. You'd have to project out realistically 10 years with this thing, and that's difficult to do with any sort of accuracy. Another reason I like to go just a couple of years. Okay, let's see what he's got now. Now we're gonna guess. 
N C R O X. Nope. Invalid ticker. Nice. I blame you for moving the mouse. <laughs> yeah, we're always battling over the mouse here. But Crocs. Okay. Is this like the shoe company? Yeah. My kids well, have the shoes. Nice. You have one. I don't have shoes. I have sneakers <laughs> on. Uh, but yeah, no, it looks interesting. 18% cost of capital. Here's one quick thing to just recognize. They have $889 million in debt, $434 million, $437 in cash. So they have net debt, they have more debt than they have cash, you're 452. So that takes away slightly from their value. But a company that debt tends to be cheaper than equity. So if you go all equity, you will get a, a higher cost of capital. Even so, 18% is way up there, 19% practically. So that's a bit outrageous. I would look into why that is. You know, a company like that, usually I would say, hey guys, take out some more debt. You know, what kind of growth are you getting? We can see their growth numbers down here are looking quite good. So it looks interesting. Even at 10%, it looks okay. You know, you got about, you know, a $20 upside actually a $30 upside there. So yeah, I'd say dig into it. Uh, it looks like this, you know, this one looks fairly good. Not great, but fairly good. Uh, uh, sen a census, surge a census, a s I don't know, I don't know. Uh, something surgical. Something surgical, a surgical, uh, no hmm. free cash flow estimates. Uh, enterprise value to EBITDA? No, enterprise value to revenue? Okay, so this is a perfect example of ignore it. Let's see that three thousand x. This must be a fairly young company, so you can throw this out. I don't know a lot about what this company does, and we would have to look at, uh, you know, some some new numbers. Smaller companies are tricky to do. You this one. Here's the answer to this one. The answer to this one is. Do a deeper dive if you have a reason for liking it, but the reason for liking it should not necessarily be the valuation. Most companies, most well-established companies, or even reasonably established companies, you can pick a ticker. You can pick the whether or not you research it based on, ah, it looks like it could be undervalued. Let me see if it's a good buy right now. But if they get too small, now you're now you're predicting the future. Well, not really predicting the future, really calling the business and the future of the business, and you're not buying it necessarily because of the valuation. So... Hope they're right. It's 87 cents a share right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah at 87 cents, yeah, if you're right, you, you could do okay, but it's it's too young to, to do anything real with from a valuation perspective. Carnival Cruise. Carnival Cruise. Overvalued, really. I'm just curious what the price chart has done. Okay. So, yeah, overvalued. We don't. Basically, do you think this industry is going to come back? That's what you're kind of looking at. Yeah, yeah. So, price to EBITDA, none of these, you know, PEs. I mean, PE looks quite good. Enterprise value to EBITDA looks quite good. Maybe, now here's what I'm suggesting. Because you have so much negative free cash flow coming out of the gate, because they're coming off of, let's face it, some unusual years, discounted cash flow might not be the way to go. Enterprise value to EBITDA looks like it could be good, and we're going back a pa the past few years, we're going back five years here, and historically, you know, they've done fairly well, uh, e you know, from a, even from a PE perspective. This could be undervalued, but... <laughs> Sorry about that. I, my apologies. Uh, this could be undervalued, but I wouldn't use discount of cash flow to determine that. The other two numbers look like they could be quite good. Enterprise value to revenue, just for the fun of it. Well, Mikey checks our next ticker here. Yeah, I know that one looks overvalued. But again, this, this whole thing, this unusual COVID situation skews all of it. So, Mikey's up. Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren or Ralph Lauren? <laughs> I just don't know. Touche. I think you got me on that one. Is it? Even though it is spelled Make it Lauren. Sound fancy, like, yeah, no, like it's Target it's and Target, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which, which one is it? Okay, so one looks undervalued, looks undervalued. I mean, fantastic, right across the board. I would dig into this one right away. See if there's any reason to think that this might be a, uh, a value trap because it looks fantastically valued. 
uh, fantastically. Is that a word? Uh, it looks it, is it looks good. Yeah, so I like <laughs> it. Yeah, go for it. This one, we should research this one, too, because this one looks really good. Good call. What Thank about Lowe's? Lowe's, I see a bunch of Lowe's. Is that the okay. same person or those What's different people? Thicker? L-O-W. Okay. And while we're at it, we might as well do Home Depot. Sure. Start off here. Lowe's. Discount of cash flow works overvalued. I can't read fast enough to realize if it's the same person or not. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. They're moving too fast. Uh, Home Depot, try that. That's got to be on. I haven't seen it on the board. I'm going to guess that somebody put it up there. But Home Depot, Lowe's looks slightly That's overvalued. HD. Uh, Home Depot looks overvalued. Okay, moving along. Uh, I'm not even going to spend a lot of time talking about this one. They look overvalued. Uh, look at how many analysts you have. Look at the projections. These are all going to be very... These are well-established companies these are you know wait for the numbers to drop uh and this kind of free cash flow typically works with these companies you'll get opportunities every now and again but not yet i guess if you're joining us late i see some of the tickers coming by that we already covered earlier on so <laughs> you, if you haven't seen yours go back afterwards and check out what we've got and we if you already. want to get access to this come sign up there's a link in the description below sign up to the private investing community, this website will be up and running in a few months. This is basically going to be the functionality. I'm assuming the web developers are going to make it prettier, but I'm a very linear thinker. That's why everything's in boxes and stuff. We're here for the numbers. Yeah, we're here for the numbers, but they, hopefully they'll make it pretty. As long as the math is correct, that's all I care about. <laughs> exactly. But Sally Beauty, undervalued. Ah, look at that. Same oh, weighted average that's... cost of capital. That, that's a coincidence. But even at 10%, looks uh, somewhat undervalued. You know, this one looks like it could be good. we got a market cap, a fairly low market cap. I don't know a lot about this company. Uh, $2 billion market cap, good potential upside, a low PE, low enterprise value to revenue. Yeah, this one looks interesting all across the board. Everybody should research this. Oh, the other cool thing we're doing in the private investing community is we're doing this research project where everybody's taking different companies and we're all researching them together and like sharing the research with each other basically it's a it's a cool way of doing it so sign up okay continue next company sorry that was my fault see what happens when you shake the table and the mouse moves i don't mess with them sorry man. <laughs> uh consumer services consumer services okay so again they have a huge cost of capital but that might be partially due to the fact that they have zero debt this is online gambling that's Really? Yeah. What kind of revenue do they have? Thirty-five million. Okay, this, this is a super tiny company. I wouldn't really. Only one analyst is covering it, so I'm always skeptical when I see one analyst. He might be. She might be spot on, but they might not be. I, you know, like one. When there's ten, when there's even five or ten or fifteen, on average, analysts actually do quite a good job. Oftentimes, people ask me, "Is it okay?" You know, do we believe analysts? And my general rebuttal is, do you ever see a, you know, you ever see the news and they're like, oh, XYZ just reported earnings and they missed earnings by three cents. It was analysts that got that number that got them within three cents. Now, I do think it's ironic that is the company that missed analysts earnings and not the analyst that missed the company's earnings. I find that humorous, but point is analysts are getting down to within pennies of what actual numbers will be so i trust analysts num financial projections what i don't trust is their price projections because they change their valuation method way too often to, and i don't really get it they change it as the stock moves but that's a that's a story for a different video verizon Uh, there oh, there it is. Okay. Well, <laughs> what? But why is that? Not uh, <laughs> so they, on the other hand, have a super low cost of capital. Why? Because they have, look at their debt, this whole industry, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, I think, I'm assuming. Uh, but for some reason, this industry is loaded with, uh, loaded with different debt levels that are so much higher than the average market. So they end up with the low cost of capital. In this case, I would go more conservative, but it's me, and I like 7.5% as a number. It's a fair number for me to start at. It's a premium over uh, corporate bonds. So I, you know, I, uh, yeah, I would say, even though this looks good, textbook, it looks like it could be way undervalued. I would hesitate on that. 
I like what they're doing on the chats. I get noticed. They're, they're highlighting things. They're putting hearts around things. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what, a WBA. What's Wall Street? Wall, Wall, want, Walgreens that? Boots Alliance. That one will work. Okay, we'll do that one. So I, I did an analysis before of Walgreens versus CVS. And uh, and we can see it looks undervalued here, undervalued here. So this is a perfect example. Another low cost of capital. Companies like this. Uh, you'll see these guys. Food companies. Uh... Beverage companies, Coke probably has a reasonable cost of capital. Companies like that tend to have a lower cost of capital because they just, they're just not as volatile as a fast-moving tech company. So lower volatility, you're going to get a lower cost of equity, lower cost of capital. But somewhat undervalued here, decent. According here, way undervalued. I would lean on this one. The question for Walgreens in this case is, whatever that margin of safety is, is it enough? Call it a $5 margin of safety. 10% uh, margin of safety. Is that enough? It might be. Walgreens, I'm a big fan of Walgreens. I'm actually a big fan of CVS, too. Uh, I think I've leaned towards CVS. Right? Was it CVS that bought yeah, you, Aetna? You like CVS. Yeah, CVS bought Aetna. I just thought it was a good move for me. You know, uh, you know. They, they, I just feel like there's a lot they can do with the, that combo. So, uh, I've always leaned towards CVS, but Walgreens is a good one. And it looks like it could be reasonably valued right now, so... You might consider doing a deeper dive on this one. Okay, what do we got? Hog. Hog. Harley, Harley Davidson. I didn't know they were still public. Uh, talks about talks about how wild I am. Uh, I completely forgot about Harley Davidson. And yeah, look at this. Lower cost of capital. Uh, $5 billion company. That's it? That's all Harley Davidson's worth? I guess, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. But, again, looks reasonably valued. Oh, yeah, by the way, dividend yield is sitting right here. So this is a company that I'd want to get a dividend yield for because their growth rate, they have them dropping here. So last year, actual numbers, they put up about a billion dollars in free cash flow. $587 million, and then some reasonable growth. Those numbers seem low to me. So, yeah, you might consider D uh, diving deeper into this one, but I'd want to know why those numbers, how long have they been around? Haven't they been around forever? A long time. Long time. I would, you know, I would, I would dig into why those numbers aren't higher, or where they can go, or do they just stay stale? You know, maybe they're coming off a bad period, I don't know. Needs more, more research for them. Yeah, more research. I, I, I Don't turn away. The value looks interesting enough. Right. Bros. Dutch, Dutch bros. bros. Never heard of them. Mario Brothers? Uh... Okay. It says they uh, manage coffee shops and restaurants. Okay, so don't know a lot about this company. Manage coffee shops and restaurants, Mikey says. But I can tell you right off the bat, discounted cash flow is not going to be the way to go because look at these numbers. They're, they're too young. Enterprise value to revenue. That's not working. Okay, enterprise <laughs> value to EBITDA. There we go. According to this... It looks like, yeah, it looks like it could be reasonably valued. I don't, I don't know why we're not getting a number here. Uh, but overall, yeah, I'd say this one could be interesting. Uh, it's a younger company, enterprise value to EBITDA. As long as they have positive EBITDA, by the way, EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Basically, it's similar to using price to earnings. It's just EBITDA is higher up the income statement, so... If a company's not profitable, let's check their PE. Are they profitable? Okay, so the company's not profitable, but they have positive EBITDA, which is why we're getting this number. So it could be a way to look at it. We could see based on their average, looks like it could be pretty good. So, although 300, I just want to point out, is super high. So yes, it is below their average, but that is super high. So I, if you're going to research it, do so cautiously. Uh, yeah, okay. Moving along. Sony. Sony. Over here. Sony, is that a tech company? Consumer durables, really? I don't know about that. And apparel? I don't know about this. I don't know how they classified themselves there, guys. That seems a bit suspect. <laughs> uh, they might do more than I thought. I, don't, I haven't really done a deep dive on them in a while. But at 7.5%, they look pretty good. Their own cost of capital, they look overvalued. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm surprised I'm a low analyst. Yeah, not many analysts. 221. I guess Sony's not that interesting. <laughs> uh, especially when we find out... No PE. Yeah. Is this the same company? Is this Sony? Know. It can't... I mean, maybe. They get $8.5 billion. 
146B. Is it Sony the, like, do they make my television? Is that that <laughs> company? Yeah. Uh, I would think so. I would think too, but I would hesitate. If it is, if the yeah. ticker is Sony, I would hesitate on that because, uh, yeah, it just doesn't look great. It looks okay, slightly undervalued, but I'd, I'd want to know about their cost of capital, you know, things like that. So I'd, ha I'd hang out on that one. See what's going on with Dell. Hang off on that one. Hang Hold off. back. Hold back. That's the word. That's the phrase I was looking for. <laughs> Dell, look at this. So Dell, we've looked at Dell a couple times, and this one we need a deeper dive on. And I think you guys should do a deeper dive on this one too, because I mean, first of all, look at the valuation. They've got some analysts enough that I'm happy with it. They've got plenty of free cash flow, although that free cash flow is trending lower, and I want to know why. I know they've got a checkered past with they delisted and then they came back and, you know, this is actually one of the companies that we're doing in our research project in the private investing community, which you got to sign up for. I'll link in the description below, but it looks so undervalued. I think you, we got to dig into it. Even with declining free cash flow estimates, the stock still looks great. So yeah, I, I would, yeah, it looks good. I mean, it looks impressive. Wow, how, how is it so undervalued? I don't understand. But we got to dig deeper on this one because this one yeah, looks like it could be a steal. And maybe it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's the next Activision. We just don't know. Yum China. Okay. Uh, fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Plenty of analysts. Decent growth. All reasonable numbers. Uh, by the way, this drop off you're seeing, you're going to see that with a lot of companies. Or you're going to see a huge jump. Depending on what they do, uh, I would. You know, I, I'm discounting what happened with COVID. I, because these are stocks, I'm, I'm a long-term investor and the concept behind discounted cash flow is to be a long-term investor. So I would, I would hesitate on, uh, I would hesitate on going, you know, being too critical of the short, the, in the short term. Look at the big picture. Looks to be slightly undervalued, it's overvalued here. Uh, you know, interesting, but I'd say it's at best okay. It's an okay one to dig into if you have a reason for it. But there's probably better ideas out there. I think this one's Western Union. Western probably. Union. Let's see. Probably, Ooh. Right? It is Western Union. Okay, now Western Union could be a good one. Let me check price to tangible book value. I have no idea. It didn't work. Price to book. Wow. Okay, that was skewed. So... Something happened there. That that makes that whole thing useless. I would say discounted free cash flow actually could work fairly well here from the perspective of, if you were to look at a company like Visa, financial company, but Visa is very transaction-based. They make their money based on transactions and they're not necessarily sitting on a ton of capital like a JP Morgan or a Goldman Sachs or a Bank of America. They're not sitting on the cash in the same way, they're getting fees based on the transactions. Fee-based businesses tend to be valued like most blue chip type of companies. So Western Union, although the, although these numbers are a bit low from how long I think Western Union has been around, I think it's been around for a long time. It's kind of a small company, but from a value perspective, looks good here, looks good here, looks good at 10%. I mean, it looks like it could be a real good buy right now. And, uh, the question we're at, we're asking ourselves if we go to research it is, do we believe these three numbers are possible? If we believe they're possible, maybe we're lucky and we do the research, we'll be like, I think they're going to beat that. They're launching some new business line or something like that. And if they do, this thing's a steal, but we got to do the research. Okay, next one. Citigroup. I see Citigroup up there. We already did Citigroup. Citigroup, go to price to tangible book value. That was early on in the video. Uh, early, early on in the live stream. Hit rewind later. Yeah. Actually, take a look at it. UNH, uh, UnitedHealth. UnitedHealth. Okay, so 10% it looks pretty good. Slightly undervalued. 7.5% it looks like a steal. 10.7%. So we right know right away their, you know, approximate annual return would be somewhere between 10 and 10.7. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this one looks like it could be 10% is plenty good for me. This is close. You know, overall, United Health looks like it could be an interesting one. You do have some dividend. PE looks a little bit high. Enterprise value looks a little bit high. Enterprise value to revenue looks a little bit high. So I would say you could go after this one, but cautiously go after it. Uh, I wouldn't just take the 753 at 7.5% and say, oh my God, 
push all the, you know, push all my money into that one. I wouldn't do that. I would, you know, I would cautiously go ahead, figure out, you know, why their cost of capital is so low. Can we get so high? Can we get it below, let's say, the full 46? Because if we do, now you're talking a potential real value. Oops. Mikey is clicking in the wrong place. Hold on, we're going back for water. Good old PayPal. PayPal. PayPal looks uh, overvalued. <laughs> 51 PE. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I have a ton to add to that. We got <laughs> a, plenty of analysts. They never seek for themselves. Yeah, man. plenty of free cash flow. Uh, and it's still being overvalued. Even their own numbers, our numbers, everybody's numbers. Yeah, I'd say I'd say hold, hold off on this one. We'll move on quickly. That way we can jump into more companies. Keep pushing me. Sorry, you keep <laughs> typing, man. EVR. Evercore. Financials. Okay, so See, Evercore, Evercore, I, I think they write ISI research. I used to get their research uh, at a company I worked at. They, uh, they they produce good research. I thought they got bought out. Oh, maybe Evercore bought, Evercore bought out ISI. I think that's what it was. But they are, if I remember correctly, they have a decent money management business. I would check out Price to Tangible Book Value. Because they're going to be ones that's sitting on a decent amount of assets, decent amount of liquid cash, which is why you would use tangible book value, because it's more liquid cash. And according to this, looks like it could be undervalued. This could be a real find. The cool part about these types of stocks, too, is they're not, you know, uh, a super popular stock that everybody sees and everybody knows about and everybody's watching. So sometimes you can find great opportunities there. And this one, lower PE, you know, good looks good on price to book value. I'd say, yeah, go ahead with this one, see what you can find. Okay, let's see what Mikey gets. Logtech. Is that right? Logitech, oh, you're close. Logitech. Not Logtech. Logitech. <laughs> Log I just skipped the I. Uh, okay. Looks pretty interesting to me. Okay, so 8.1% cost of capital looks undervalued. About 10% undervalued. At 7.5% looks even more undervalued. Maybe 20%, a little more. Undervalued. Overall, I think it looks fairly good. Look at the PE compared to its own five-year average. Looks pretty good. I'd say overall, this one looks super interesting. And a stock like this, I think, has the potential to, because this is more of a well-known stock, it'll correct itself in time. By the way, this chart here, this is revenue to free cash flow. So back here, what, uh, what time period is that? 2020, 13% of revenue was converted into free cash flow. 2021... 26% of revenue was converted into free cash flow. That number is going to hit a ceiling. You know, it's at some point it's going to hit a ceiling. So, but that number going up is a good thing. You know, the fact that it was 3% down here and then, you know, the average is pretty good. So I just want to point out what that was and why we had that chart there. Uh, it's really just a reference point. But yeah, Logitech, Logitech, low, <laughs> low. Gee Tech looks good. I'd say I'd say dig deeper to that one. That one looks excellent from a value perspective. I feel ready for some more. I'm ready. Yeah, no, keep firing. Yeah, this keep firing. We were like 15 minutes late. We created a whole new room. You guys have to come all the way over here. The least we'll we can going. do is to keep going. <laughs> okay. Yeah, MP Materials. Wow. Okay. okay. So looks overvalued. Yeah. It might be a bit young. Wait, I'm just gonna check enterprise value. No, no. It must be young. Look at this. It only goes back to 2020. I don't know much about this company, but looks overvalued there, looks undervalued according to their revenue, which means we'd be paying less for every dollar of revenue now than we would have been on average. Enterprise value to EBITDA, we'd be paying more for each line item of EBITDA. By the way, the further we can go, can we go to PE? Probably not. Wow, <laughs> it works. Slightly undervalued there. I would start at the bottom of the balance. I like free cash flow, and then you go to earnings, then you go to EBITDA, then you go to revenue. You know, sort of work your way up. And uh, some of them you can't. They don't have positive earnings, so you got to do it. Uh, FTNT, I just saw one. Yep. Put it up. So yeah, this one could be undervalued, could be, but uh, I would hesitate. You know, this one's a maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, I think we looked at the software company before. Okay, so last week. interesting here, plenty of analysts, right? These numbers are probably, you know, you got reasonable growth. Now, our numbers are going to be fairly conservative because, again, we got them growing. Call it 18%, 23%, 18%. Next year, 25 
because that's our perpetual growth rate. So we're definitely on the more conservative side, but this $200 stock, where we're coming up with a $200 fair value, even if you went out three or four more years, I don't know. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, we gotta make up $110 to get to the current price. So I would hesitate on this one. There might be better opportunities in other industries or even other companies that they compete with. But, you know, I like the, I like the thought process. Courser Gaming. Cor okay, yeah, this one, so this one looks good, and we've actually looked at this one a couple times. This one is, I believe they make, like, the accessories, like headphones, uh, headphones keyboards, yeah. microphones, mm -hmm. microphones, I might have just made that last one up. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're in there. Yeah, attached, they make the accessories for video the, games. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, but, look at this, cost of capital looks undervalued, about 10% undervalued. Uh, the, you want to buy this and wait for Microsoft to buy them. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, this is actually a perfect buyout candidate. This is a type of thing, a uh, type of company Microsoft would buy, Absolutely. you know, buyout, or you get cleaning, a lot of companies buying these companies up. companies like this. Yeah. So, uh, from that, don't do it for that reason. No. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a silly move. Uh, but, it looks undervalued, so you might buy it because, in theory, you can get 10% if our numbers are correct, that's the research. The research, the next question is, do we believe these numbers? If we do, this thing could be a great price right now. This could be a steal, but we gotta, we gotta do our own research to see if we think it could be undervalued. All right, what has he got? I'm very excited to see. <laughs> this is AM or AM. Oh, Amazon. Okay, enough said. Uh, you know what this company does? Or? I think that I think that they do something with uh, shipping. Their competitor of UPS, maybe. Uh, look at their free cash. I mean, you got to be just impressed with the, what this company's done. Wait, what? Why is they have them going from twenty-five billion last year to four billion to thirty-four to forty-eight. I mean, I don't know. Uh, did something happen with their free cash flow to make it so free cash flow is cash flow from operations that knows what they're buying minus capital expenditures yeah, exactly. it is very possible during 2021 by the way they might be through three quarters of 2021 that's why it's an estimate that maybe there's another quarter yet left to like close out the year but they might have made big investments in you know new trucks are launched i mean knowing amazon the facilities they probably. could have done anything there's a whole ton for them to put into capital expenditures so that might be why analysts are expecting a very low number there but you got plenty of analysts here so you got to lean somewhat on these numbers these guys spend a lot of time predicting things if you yeah it just looks so overvalued from every valuation method so overvalued here it doesn't even fit that's got to be good we could shrink the font but it would just it it's just doesn't even else. fit <laughs> yeah exactly let's let's move on to that one i love the company i wish i bought shares years ago but i didn't applied materials semiconductors okay high cost of capital low debt load they can clearly afford more debt since they have more cash than they know not slightly less 294 million more cash than they have debt no more debt than they have cash but that's relatively low, so probably one of the reasons you're going to get up with the higher cost of capital. I need this one to drop a bit because they have such a high cost of capital. I'd look for a bigger margin of safety, but it looks interesting. Because it is meeting my 7.5%, I don't know where you have the required rate of return. But, yeah, it looks, it looks like it could be fairly interesting, but I'd want to add a bigger margin of safety because of their higher cost of capital. Okay, let's see what he's got next. We're going back for water. Should have brought water. <laughs> let's see what this one is. Lululemon. Lulu. Okay. Uh, overvalued. Look at the PE. 48x. Yeah, too high. Too high. Yeah, no, I'd say move on quickly. Uh, we could argue that the... Uh, the analysts were not going out. It's too conservative. You know, you're getting too much growth and then it's falling off to our perpetual growth rate. But overall, I would say, uh, yeah, I'd say look for something different. This one at this price is too much. Skills. Skills. Um, I think they make... Mobile gaming. Mobile gaming. Yeah. Okay. Uh... How big are they? 2.3 billion. No, no analysts are covering it, so that automatically changes that. 
Uh, let's go PE. Not profitable. EV to EBITDA, EV to revenue. They look slightly undervalued here, but again, this is goes back to this is one of those examples that I would dig into the company first and then see if you can come up with a, a reasonable way to value it. They are we are getting a cost of capital of 10.3, so you can we can use that information, but without any analysts, it could be tricky to come up with uh, you know numbers and they they haven't been around long enough. So from a from a historical valuation perspective, so for me, I usually prefer to go after bigger companies. Uh, like Activision, better track record that uh, that you can value and say, hey, it looks like a good good opportunity, and then you can get lucky and somebody can buy them. Like maybe somebody? Apple, A A P L. Nope. Mikey, they're going by real fast. Uh, okay, A <laughs> A P L. Apple, I love. I actually own a couple of shares of Apple. Uh, from I have a Robinhood affiliate link in the description of my videos, and uh, Robinhood gave a share of Apple. I was really quite surprised. I think I got two of them. I was really quite Meanwhile, surprised I by got that. Some dodgy uh, pharmaceutical. <laughs> yeah, I was. They usually give like three or four or five dollars stocks. I got a share of Apple. I was like, well, we'll save that one. Got that at a good value. But as you might expect, even though they're producing 116 billion dollars in free cash flow in 2024, they have a 2.7 trillion dollar market cap. It looks overvalued, although not that overvalued at seven and a half percent, one thirty eight to one seventy. You know, this is one of those that I haven't bought it. I'm waiting the next market crash. Two companies I want to buy Apple and Microsoft. I have loved these two companies, love their business, love what they're doing. They've just never been valued reasonably, except for when COVID hit. And I jumped into Disney, uh, which has turned out okay. I was just about to say you'd probably jump into more Disney. Yeah, that. Disney was Disney was great, but Apple and Microsoft are two stocks I would love to own. I just want the value. I'm, I'm just afraid to violate my own rules about buying it at a good value. The rules are there for a reason. Exactly. Costco. Oh, I love this company. No, I don't. Immediately, <laughs> immediately dislike it. Uh, no, again, another example of a company I love. I love the business. Plenty of analysts. Good free cash flow. Reasonable growth. Sure, we might be being conservative with our perpetual growth rate because uh, it's unlikely they're going to go from 17% to 2.5. But still, with our numbers, it should be worth 281, and we're saying it's worth 489. Uh, or no, the current price is 489, and that's you know that's a huge gap. So as much as I love the business, you know I, I hesitate on this one. Even their PEs at 41 right now, that's high. You know, there's too many. You could buy the market for less than that. So. Then again, the stock's doing fairly well. Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto. Uh, isn't this a mining company? It Would is a mining company. They do something like that? Yes, you are correct. Uh, plenty of analysts. And for some reason, oh, you know what? It's kicking back debt errors. Oh, that's interesting. That is just a Excel error for some reason. And I apologize. Luckily, yeah. we're going to do what we can not to let that happen on the website. But, Should we move on? Yeah, wait, let yeah, me right. just check enterprise value to revenue. Enterprise value to EBITDA, PE. Yeah, enterprise value to revenue. I thought that was going to work <laughs> best. Uh, so it's about fairly valued. Yeah, you could say it's slightly undervalued right now, but I'd hesitate. I don't know why we're getting errors on their debt. But, yeah, I wonder what that is. So I apologize for that one, but moving right along. Ooh, that was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I blame their debt. It was yeah, that I blame bad. their debt. Yeah, they come on, guys. Stop us. hiding your debt numbers. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not, I'm not going to take responsibility for that. Uh, okay. Twitter. Another one. Overvalued. Uh, 84X. Yeah. No, it looks... It, it is probably a bit young of a company to be going just kind of cash flow. But those are reasonable numbers. you got plenty of analysts. I would hesitate. Uh, yeah, I would hesitate. It seems overvalued, but... You know, once I get a little further in their life cycle, then maybe. But for now, I would I would hold off on this one. Twitter, the bird company. Twitter, Twitter. Edward Life Sciences, I believe it's called. Uh, another uh, another overvalued healthcare. Yeah. So again, healthcare. We're seeing it overvalued now. Plenty of analysts. Plenty of you know the numbers all seem very reasonable. PEs sky high. I would hesitate on this one unless we have a reason. So all these ones that I'm saying hesitate, unless there's a reason. If you know that there's news out that shot the price up, that you know something, the business is doing something, 
then fine, research it and see if we can come up with better estimates. Uh, but for now, I would I would hesitate if we're you know if there's not a lot out there and they just got run up with healthcare stuff. You know, there's too many healthcare opportunities out there that look better. All right, what else do we got? We ran out. We did every stuff. We did every stuff. All twenty thousand tickers worldwide. Etsy. 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 Overvalued. PE looks low, but that's because 76x is a silly high number. Um, just from what I know about Etsy, might be a bit young for this, but not really. They got reasonable numbers, reasonable growth. Yeah, I would, I'd wait for this one to drop a bit. They have a high cost of capital, set 13.7%. I'd hesitate a bit, but overall, yeah, I'd, I'd look for something different. There's... You know, or wait for this thing to, or research it, put it in your bullpen, wait for it to get to the price that you think is reasonable. But for now, I'd be looking at least the 119. Sorry, I'm just trying to read on that. We might be breaking our record today, by the way. Yeah, AMD. AMD. So I own Intel, looked at AMD, and AMD, again, they're made, they're, ahead of the game. They're beating Intel from a chip perspective in many in many lines. But my hesitation is when I had the money to and I was gonna buy Intel or AMD, Intel looked undervalued. AMD, despite the fact that I believe the stock has done great. It's done fairly well. You know, pretty pretty good price move, although I guess that's you know that's a that's a pretty good percentage move. Uh but yeah it looks overvalued. They got reasonable numbers, reasonable analysts, 59 PE I'd rather, you know, one of the questions we might ask ourselves, if we're going to pay 59 times, that means, essentially, for every dollar of profit that they make, you're paying $59 for every dollar of profit. Well, we could just buy the S&P 500, which I think is about 2021x right now, which historically is high, but still, if you have a choice between 59x and 21x, granted, you're going to get more growth here, but you might not necessarily get more growth in the stock price, so something to consider, but I'd... I, I've consistently passed on this one, but the stock's way up, so what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Netflix. Netflix. Ooh. Wow. Uh, so I don't even want to say overvalued. <laughs> We're coming up with a fair value of 92 uh, and negative. Okay, so here's one of my issues with a company like Netflix. A lot like a, uh, a movie company in general is that every now and again, you've got to lay out big, big money to produce big, big, Productions? Is that a thing? Can yeah, you produce big right? productions? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they have some really big films on their site this year. They do. Well, that's the thing is that you got to drop such big money to get it there that you might end up with low free cash flow. So let's assume for a second that's not a good way to do it. Go to PE. Yeah, it looks undervalued. <laughs> it looks undervalued, <laughs> but, but that's because this is so obscene. Uh, you know, I what I would prefer to do is research it, project out further. Go out to 2028. And see what the numbers, you know, tick down the 203% growth there. Go 100% the next year, and then 50, and then 25. Again, we'll have all this capability on the website. So, if you haven't signed up for the website and joined us on Discord, where we do this live stream every week, do it. We have one this coming Friday. Mikey will be here. He's back. Wait, you guys can't see him. Here he is. Wait, wait. I'm going to put him on. Mikey. He, he was very okay. He's off. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sorry. screen time. Sorry, about that. Hey, hey, you hit your screen time, Max. I'm sorry. He has to pay me after five seconds. <laughs> yeah, we got a very strict con con uh, contract over here. Uh, okay, this one, uh, Vistra. I don't know a lot about it, but utilities. Okay, so on the live streams that we do, we do these. We're actually doing one tonight. Uh, where we're building these different portfolios, and on those portfolios, we talked about how to diversify our portfolios. We did a whole correlation table where we looked at companies, what industries, how they moved with each other. Utilities was fairly low. I We've gone through a couple utilities and they've looked overvalued. So the, this one is super interesting because utilities often don't move with everything else. So the, the point of that is that if the stock market took a, dump, a tumble, yeah, this is gonna be down, but it might not be down as much or it might recover quicker on the way up. So this could be an interesting diversifier to a portfolio, and this one looks like a great one to research. Now, I would hesitate. 5.5% cost of capital. Mikey keeps moving the mouse. That's why he's jumping like that. 5.5% <laughs> cost of capital. Uh, 
that I would I would expect that with most utilities because they're going to have a low cost of capital. They're not going to be very volatile, hence the lower correlation. But looks like even with seven and a half percent, looks like it could be undervalued, way undervalued. Ten percent, still decent upside. What is that? Twenty percent. I, I would start here. This looks like a great diversifier for a lot of portfolios, especially if you're afraid of a market crash. This one might be one to consider. You know, if not them, maybe find a couple competitors. Okay. WMT. Nope. Walmart. Discount of cash flow is perfect for Walmart. And it's overvalued. Although they have a low cost of capital, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, low cost of capital, not at all surprised by that. Uh, I think that... Yeah, no, there's not much beyond that. I would wait for this one to pull back a bit. They're trading at a PE of 23x. That is... Uh, that is that's too high. That's too high for a company like Walmart. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be uh they're gonna be you know they should be I, I, I wanna buy them when they're below the market average. Forget their own five year average, which they're above right now. I wanna buy them when they're below the market average. Again, I should put the market average on this thing. But we'll do that next time. We'll do that for Friday's live stream. Yep. So join us Friday, sign up. Yeah, sign up. He's right. Waste man. Waste man. Okay, so this is a good one. Just kind of cash flow should work, and it's not. And <laughs> or it is it is working. It's just saying it's overvalued, and it's saying it's way overvalued. Uh there are 7.7%. It's mighty close to us. Yeah, we don't even have to go much further. 33x for a waste management company. You know, yeah, I, I would I would hesitate on this one. Uh, I I'll bet you there's other opportunities out there. Let's see, let's take a quick glance at Gap. Okay, so Gap, they have a high cost of capital. So this one, I uh, a low PE, which is interesting. They uh, high cost of capital, but with that, they look overvalued. According to ours, they look like they could be somewhat undervalued. This is one of those that I think we should dig into to see uh, to see if it's really an opportunity. And one, why their why is their cost of capital so high? You know, they've got $6.3 billion, $6.4 billion in debt. You know, they're a $6.4 billion company. You know, they have as much debt as they are. You know, okay, look. This is a maybe. I'd say dig into it, see what we could find. But uh, it's a maybe. Okay, what do you got? Did we just do VST? No, do VST. I like it. VST. Vistra? Vistra. Another utility. Okay. Did we do it VST? I don't remember. What was the other utility? Because this looks great too. <laughs> yeah. This looks fantastic. We might have done it. Sorry, we're throwing them out so fast. Yeah, but... we we're seeing repeats. We're seeing if it, if it was Vistra, if it wasn't Vistra, this is a good one to consider. Uh, I want to say it wasn't because I think I would have recognized this dip lower here. Yeah. But, you know, that's somewhat unusual for a utility, so... You know, we want to find out why. That's one of the keys of our research is we want to find out why. Low cost capital, which is, I believe, the same number as the other one. It might have been the same company. Looks interesting. Dig into it. I'd say we jump on to a different one. Uh, but even 10% looks good there. So, yeah, I, I dig into that one. Sorry for the repeat. Case. Yeah. Was it a repeat? It was. I don't know. It might have been. <laughs> I'm 22% sure it was. 22%. That's 22. an interesting number. Yeah, you know, it's important to throw out a random number. Uh... Penske Automotive. Intriguing. Interesting. Okay, so first hesitation, they're declining here. A low PE, but based on these declining numbers, there might be a reason of this low. Uh, although free cash flow did have a big jump. Although not that big, 5%. I mean, it had a big jump. It was five times bigger than it was the year before. But it's not that big in general, so I would, I would hesitate. Looks overvalued. I think I, I would look for a different opportunity. I think that there's better opportunities out there. This one I hesitate on. Only two analysts, so maybe they're wrong, but we'd have to do that research to find out. Intel, love it. Craig's baby. Don't like it anymore. Uh, no, okay, so Intel is one that, so I'll tell you the real issue with Intel, and I, and I knew this was going to be an issue when I was cutting out a year. We were doing four years, of uh, analyst estimates for free cash flow. And then we went to three. That's what this is. What you're seeing now 
is these three years are analyst estimates. But this brings up the issue of, are we being too conservative? I know for a fact that 2022 and 2023, because I've researched the company, you've probably seen it in the videos I've done if you've watched any of them. But I know that the companies are, uh, they're doing, they're putting up new, they're putting up new plants to build more chips in 2022 and 2023. The fourth year on our old spreadsheet, Intel would have looked quite different because in year four, it, uh, it jumps back up to about 13 billion. So that's the reason you're seeing this giant drop off here. So that this is an example of we want to go, we're going to want to expand it because our two and a half percent is slightly, you know, misleading there. That's why we're encouraging things like that. You see something that looks off, look into it. Why, yeah, dig into it. it. Always, always do the research. I'm more than happy to buy this stock because I've calculated also going out extra years. But I'm more than happy to buy this stock. I bought mine at about $45 per share. I own this stock. I bought about 45 bucks per share. Uh, but I'm more than happy to do that because... That dip in free cash flow is one of the reasons I want to buy them because they're going, they've been having manufacturing issues for a couple of years. Build more plants to correct those issues. Spot plus with the semiconductor shortage, you know, I think, I think it only helps. So, uh, yeah, I like it. All right, we'll do a couple more, guys. Other than that, you have to join us Friday. Yeah, come over, join the community. And where are we now? Global foundries. More semiconductors. Yeah, more semiconductors. And uh, this is a smaller company called 30 billion. Yeah, it might be uh, Global Foundry, it might be a bit on the small side because this kind of cash flow, I'm not sure. Clearly, they're doing something in this year. This is a good example of it. They're doing something in that year. Analysts, so there's four of them, so we got enough analysts. Uh, they're projecting something there. And. Uh, yeah, I, I would hesitate on this uh, or dig into it and project out further because this company seems a bit small to be, uh, to you know, to go with discounted cash flow so soon. Hibbit retailer, look at the numbers here. 12.8%. And this is sporting goods. Still looks undervalued. Mm. Uh, only one analyst, so take that for what it's worth. But if we check, but PE5, let's check price to earnings. Let's check the historical chart. I mean, look at that. To me, this is a great example. You know, you buy it when it gets super low. It gets super low here, it gets super low here. We're almost down where we were with uh, COVID. That's, you know, that's impressive. G gotta do the research first. Gotta di dive deeper into this one and see, is there a reason the price chart, let's check the price chart, is so low. You know, if there is, okay, then maybe we don't buy it, but right now the value looks like it could be such a good value, could be worth going for it. Could be worth digging deeper into it. Mikey's messing with the mic. <laughs> right. So guys, thanks for bearing with us in the beginning with our technical difficulties, but we went a little extra time so we can, as yeah. you can see, he was uh, stressed out and shooting out as fast as he could. Today. Yeah, I'm sorry for all the words I messed up. <laughs> if you join us on our normal chat, we might spend like a little bit more time on each stock. We're, we're, we're trying to get as many in as possible today. Yeah, usually we try to explain the sort of the thought process behind when it works, when it doesn't. We might test, you know, more different valuation methods. Right. But we want to also be able to, uh, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of platforms have trouble with, you know, financial companies, things like that. So we're trying to, oh, we got banks. Let's go into a couple banks real quick. So we're trying to give you as many options as possible to analyze your stocks. Exactly. And there's so many good ideas up there. There's so many, even in a market that could be overvalued, there's so many interesting ideas that some of them play out very well, like Activision. That played out way better than anybody. Yeah, yeah. It's only than I was expecting. Yeah, hopefully you watched our video a month ago. Now, we are hopefully have the link below. If, if not, we will add one. If not, if you're you can, watching you us on the replay, it, we'll add one. to invest. Yeah, exactly. Activision. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, we're, we really appreciate you guys coming in. These tickers are fantastic. We find we learn something new every time we do this. That's yeah, what's exactly. so great about this community. We all talk about it. We get to learn from each other. Yeah, come sign up. There's a link in the description below for how to sign up. Come, come sign up. The website's going to be up and running. We're saying by the end of the second, second quarter. quarter yeah. So, and we're locking in the price. So if you sign up today, the price will never go up on you ever. Like we won't raise it next year or the year after. We're just going to lock it in. So come over, sign up. And we look forward to seeing you over there. So many people, so many smart people in that community.